Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is sleet. Let's take a look at what this verb means. There's really only one definition for this verb. And it, what it means is to have sleet fall. You might be wondering, well, what, what is sleet? And this is a little bit of a preview. Sleet can also be a noun. So sleet is a form of precipitation. You might think of this as liquid coming from the sky. But this type of uh, precipitation, it's different than rain and it's different than snow. It has little bits of ice. Um, and sometimes it could be mixed with rain or snow. So as you hear this verb used, people are referring to these little bits of ice falling from the sky. You should know that sleet is a regular verb. To make the progressive form, all we're going to do is add ing to form sleeting. To form the past tense and participle forms of the verb, we just need to add ed. Because the verb sleet t -t ends with a t sound, our ed is going to make an id sound. Sleeted. Sleeted. You'll be happy to know I don't have any additional phrasal verbs for you. And that's going to allow us to move on and do a little different verb tense practice. Today, we're just going to look at the present progressive and the simple future using will. And the reason I chose these two verb tenses is because I think you are more likely to hear this verb used in these two tenses. If you ever uh, look for a weather on, on your phone, or maybe you watch weather on a, a television program, right? You are likely to hear present progressive with this verb or simple future. So our meteorologists or weather forecasters will talk about what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. So let's look at present progressive. Um, and actually, before we do that, I should note, um, in all of these verb tense, uh, verb tense examples that we're doing, much like yesterday, our subject is going to be it. And it is referring to the weather. Uh, and this is, again, how you're most likely going to hear these verbs used. You're not going to really hear it paired with any other subject. So that's, if, if you're wondering, why are all the subjects it? Well, it's because I'm referring to the weather. So to make an affirmative present progressive sentence, I'm going to have my subject, then a form of be, and then that ing form of the verb. So again, because my subject is it, uh, you're going to see the uh, present form of be uh, is used in this sentence. And I've used a contraction um, if I've had students tell me previously that sometimes that makes things harder, you don't have to use contractions. I always like to teach it, though, because that's how you're going to hear many native speakers talk. So my example sentence, it's sleeting, so please be careful driving home. I'm describing something that is happening now, uh, and that's why you're hearing the present progressive there. If I want to make a negative present progressive sentence, I need to insert not after be. So I'm going to have be, then not, and then that ing form of the verb. And you might hear two different contractions with the present progressive uh, negative. You might hear someone say, it's not sleeping right now. Or the, some, the person speaking could say, it isn't sleeping right now. Both of those are correct and they have the exact same meaning. If I want to make a yes or no question in the present progressive, I'm going to start with my form of be, then I'll have my subject, then the ing form of the verb. Is it sleep? And so I'm asking again about the conditions right now. Now let's take a look at simple future. I chose to use will in making simple future uh, sentences because we tend to use it for predictions. And uh, that, again, sort of connects back to uh, 
meteorologists, weather forecasters, they are making a prediction about what they think is going to happen with the weather. And the nice thing about using will is no matter what your subject is, you're just going to have will and then the base verb. So here's an example. It will sleep between 4 and 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Okay, so again, someone is, uh, this could be a sentence you'll, you would hear from uh, a TV meteorologist. If I want to make a negative simple future sentence, I'm going to insert not after will. You may hear native speakers use the contraction form won't. It won't sleep later today. And if I want to ask a simple future question uh, that's just yes or no, I can start with will, then I'll have my subject, then the base verb. Will it sleep this weekend? Now we're going to take a look at some words related to our verb sleet. And I sort of already told you that this word can also be a noun. So sleet as a noun means a form of precipitation liquid coming from the sky that consists of small bits of ice and oftentimes it may be mixed with rain or snow. So here's an example of a noun form of sleet. The rain may change into sleet later today. Okay. And I thought it could be really helpful. I added a little picture here if you're wondering, well, wait, what's, what's the difference between all of this different precipitation? So uh, if you look at the picture here, we're going to start on the left side. When the air temperature is very warm, so uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or above or zero degrees Celsius and above, when uh, there is precipitation, it's going to fall as rain. Okay. When we have really warm air closer to the clouds, but cold air closer to the ground, then sometimes we will get freezing rain. Okay. Now, if there's just a little bit of warm air under those clouds, but it's mostly cold air. So when I say cold air, under 32 degrees, Fahrenheit or under zero degrees Celsius, that's when you're going to get sleet. And then finally, if we only have cold air, then we'll get snow. The last word I'm going to leave you with today is the adjective sleety. So where you, uh, what that might mean is of or relating to sleet. Uh, it could also be sleet like if we're trying to describe something. So Here's an example of this adjective in a sentence. Last week was so rainy and sleety. Okay. This probably isn't an adjective you're going to hear a lot, but in case you would hear it or see it, uh, hopefully you can connect its meaning. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.